Okay, so I've been at work doing more things on the plugin. Uh, I finished up the procedural keyboard, everything on the, or at least for 2D. Everything on 2D is fully functional, and 3D is mostly functional. It's going to need a little bit more going over for the 3D side, but I'm not that worried about it right now. Um, console, I hit a little button underneath it that activates 3D mode. And in 3D mode, I added these little wands. And let me turn on console. Oh, I already had text on there. You take the little wands and you can poke at the keys, type whatever you want to type. And it goes in, enter, uh, backspace works. And then we don't want the wands anymore, you just let it go, and they go back to where they were. So, I mean, it's a 3D keyboard, you can also type with your hands just by waggling your hands up over everything, but being this small, it's a little imprecise. If you were gonna do that, you'd wanna go, so you wanna make like a bigger keyboard. Maybe not that big. Yeah, something like that. And then type with your hands or the wands. I think for the hands, you'd want something a little bigger than that. Maybe you want like that. Yeah, that'd be a lot easier. Um, it's all run off of a data table, so you, this is a data table with things generated on it. I mean, just lines, and it says like you know, this key is this type of key with this character, this alternative character, and um, what type of key cap it's using. So you can override the default key cap. And use a custom one, you know, like maybe one that has an image on it or has a different functionality. Or in the case of like ABC here, which isn't working on 3D yet, by the way. This one is a toggle instead of the push of everything else. So you can override the type of key. And then it just generates the keyboard off of that. And it uses the same table for the 2D and the 3D keyboards. So you can just swap in between 2D and 3D at will. I like it. I think it's pretty cool. Um, especially for doing stuff like this where I just attach it to me and wander around and do stuff and I'm like, oh, what happened there? I better go into console mode, see what happened. Kind of hard to see right now, but it's the capsule. I've always had the ability to resize the player capsule. It's just, um, since it has to modify it on the physics thread, since the shape changed, it's not something that I suggest people do in multiplayer. So I'd never explicitly provided direct support for it in multiplayer. You could have always done it manually by replicating it or doing it on frame. But there's a chance that saved motions could screw that up. So um, I never explicitly built into the saved motions to be able to handle that. And people were asking about it recently, so I added it in. And um, now it does do that. So I'm in, uh, I'm actually I'm not a client. I'm going to go become a client here real quick. So let's go into find servers and join server. I can shut off better there. There we go. Now I'm in the server with her. And my capsule height is changing. I forgot to actually put something that I'd have to crawl under up here. Except for maybe at the top of these boxes. Oh yeah, somebody was talking about they want to do a low G mode. So I went ahead and made one uh, custom. You could always use flying movement for a low G mode. But there were some things about it that weren't perfect. And I knew that if I made a custom mode for it, I could iterate over time with it and get things smoother and cleaner than you could do, you know, just doing it in Blueprint with flying movement. So for this test project, I have it when you're climbing, if you release, you go into no gravity mode where you retain velocity. Um, let's see. So let's find one of these. 
that I couldn't normally fit under. Like this one. And now I can. Because my capsule height's lower. And if I stand all the way up. Well, I guess I'm not quite high enough for that. I can still kind of get underneath it. I have the capsule height set to the height of the headset, which is a little wrong because that's not the top of the head. I should be offsetting it by a head height as well. But I'm not currently doing that. I still wouldn't suggest people use capsule height replication in multiplayer if possible. Um, character movement crouch works fine if you just want two settings, you know, standing up and then crouching down for height. Oh yeah, the flying movement doesn't offset. If as I was walking here, I'm going to go to walking on the ground. Um, because being a physics thread thing, it's actually pretty um, intense when you have a bunch of people doing this constantly. So I wouldn't actually suggest that people do um, capsule height change in multiplayer if they can help it. I tested with five characters going at about 200 hertz. And it was decently expensive. I know you'd never do that normally. You keep it at 30 to 20 hertz and um, however many characters you have, but this is not a good idea. Yeah. Actually, a little surprised that stepping up is working correctly with it right now. So I hadn't finished debugging that yet, but it appears to be. So, all right. Um, I fixed a small error with step up where it's more reliable now without the multiplier. So I've actually zeroed the multiplier out so it's normal now. And I'm taking in the direct movement of the capsule for the step up direction, which I was already doing on the ground on flatland. And I forgot about that I hadn't been doing for the climbing step up. So let's get on flatland. There we go. All right, so for flatland, when I go to step up onto something, I add in the headset mo motion as well into the step up vector, which makes it really smooth and easy to step up. And um, if I don't do that, you just collide with the wall because it's not considering the head movement at all for this. And then when I'm doing the low grab step up, I don't do that because of how the movement mode works, and it just handles its step up by itself. But, you know, both methods work, so. All right, so I've got some requests for some things to do for the plugin. Um, uh, vehicle and bow and arrow specifically. I would like to do both. I have to figure out for vehicle, I don't want to just do a basic vehicle. I want to do one that you actually open a door, you get inside of, you grab a steering wheel, and you control the vehicle. That's my goal for a vehicle. So to do that, I need to make a mesh with doors, wheels, a working vehicle with all the correct bones that I can do that with. And I'm not a modeler, so it's going to take me a little while to do something that works like that. For bow and arrow, when I find time, I will um, directly copy Epic's template one so people have a reference because they know the basic way to initialize it. And then I will modify it with the plugin to support more advanced features like bow orientation with the secondary attachment. Because I will be able to take the bow and the string and orientate the bow up and down with just a secondary attachment, no extra math. And then the arrow can orientate the same, just forward direction. And I've done it before with a project, and it worked really well, and it's clean. So, I mean, that's basically the only thing I need to change on that. You can also set it up so the arrow rotates instead, but it's nicer to have the entire bow move. Instead of you know, having a static bow that you go like this, you just pull the arrow back, and the bow rotates with this. You don't have to move your hand directly. That's nice. I'm open to more suggestions for the plugin, and um, I'll get around to adding them when I can. I'm a little low on time lately because my wife is very much pregnant, and our oldest son is in summer, and our youngest son currently is around eight months old, so he's you know toddler age. 
So I'm dealing with all that. And I um, actually ended up putting a, a Patreon that is not necessary for the plugin at all. The plugin's still free, open source, whatever. I want people to use it. I want people to have fun with it. I want people with no resources, no income to use it. The Patreon is there for if people feel like supporting me in doing more advanced things with the plugin. Like, I can't touch most of Oculus stuff right now. The plugin works with Oculus, but it's not optimized for it because I don't have the hardware. And I can't justify buying the hardware for testing a free plugin I work in with my wife. <laughs> and um, other things like having a full-time job and you know, two, almost three kids now. I don't have all the free time that I could have to work on stuff for this. And if I get enough support, I can drop a few hours at work with them because I'm pretty flexible in hours and uh, put that time into the plugin instead. So people can consider it. It doesn't matter to me either way. It's just there. But that's all for now. I have a lot going under the hood. I have a big list of feature things I'd like to get to. When I can get to them, I'll try. Um, 3D keyboard I want to finish up. But it's not a big deal. I mean, it's mostly functional, and the few bugs it has are minimal. So I've been working on the code and side of things for a few days now. So I'll let you guys know when I have more updates. All right, see you.